OBS a little smaller. I think. God, I don't see that much of me. And that way, I can have more room here for the chat. So where is everybody? Well, I guess that's not too bad. I did start on time today, so you got to give me credit for that. Let me say some hellos, and then um, I was using these scales. We're trying to stick to them. I did add the blues notes, uh, and um, uh, Deej, the, uh, yeah, the, the minor G minor six pentatonic creates that BB King sound when you. Take that, the seventh in the G blues, which is an F, and you take it down to E, you get that happy blues sound that B.B. King would do. Kind of an oxymoronic statement. Uh, so Bruce, John Kinden, John, good to see you. Uh, Bruce, thanks for joining us. Uh, Bruce is working on a, uh, a cigar box guitar for me. And you can see the progress of that on, his, on, on the... Um, on the Discord, which I'll post in a little bit here, once I see some new faces. Um, I was hoping that Timothy would show up. Timothy was a new viewer on Monday, and he asked me a question on my YouTube, uh, on the comments on that video, and I, I kind of want to answer it to him here, because it's not, well, I, it would take me forever to type out the answer, and uh, you know me. And it's, it's stuff we've talked about over the last 141 lessons, uh, so it'll, it'll be good reiteration for everyone else. Uh, so B Bob Schumann is in the house. David Sillers in, in uh, Scotland. Holly is here. Good to see you, Holly. Uh, really easy to recognize your um, avatar. Let's see. It's like no one else's. Um, Peroni, good to see you. I am doing well. 
Long day yesterday. Man, I was tired. And I, I, you know, when you're so tired, you can't go to sleep. I hate that. So I didn't get great sleep last night. I'm going to try to sleep until I can't sleep. Daria, Tacoma. Hey, good to see you. Are you new? Are you from Tacoma? Uh, da Daria, not Daria. Deira. I'm going to guess it's probably pronounced Deira. Deira, Tacoma. It's a great name. Ice Coffee's in the house. Ed's in the house. Uh, Deej, I already, I already, you were the first comment I saw. Um, Paul Meyer, hey, Paul's there. So now I see you this time. <laughs> I keep missing your comments. So, hi, Paul. My first bandmate. You know, that, that's such a, an honor, right? <laughs> well, that'll be on your, like, your tombstone. Yeah, uh, Paul Meyer. Here lies Paul Meyer. He was in Tom Sterley's first band. <laughs> it's like, no, that's just wrong. That's horrible. Yeah, greeny meeny, exactly. You got that negative, you know, the negative image thing. Oh, yeah, and speaking of string height, this thing is suddenly like super low. It's like, I need to raise the action here. And I was looking at the neck. I'm like, what happened to the neck? And it's like, the neck is. To be honest, looks freaking perfect. I mean, eh, yeah, it's pretty darn perfect. But I had this out, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't, for fast playing, it's great, but for bends, bends are always hard um, when you uh, when your action's too low. It's kind of one of the trade-offs. A little easier to play, but then when you go to bend, all the things you want to slide out from under your fingers, so. Uh, you should have stuck with it. Yeah, well, but you know, and you're playing. You said you're playing with a band now, and it's because you have a keyboard. Totally, maybe true. I mean, how many? I mean, that's how. Uh, isn't that how? Uh, uh, shoot, what was the name? Um, Stu Sutcliffe got in the Beatles. Was it because he had the PA system or something? I forget why. Plus, his girlfriend took pictures, um, and some of the best pictures of the Beatles are his girlfriend. Uh, what was her name? That's a sad, that's a sad uh, story. Stu Sutcliffe dying of a brain hemorrhage. Did that happen in Hamburg? But it was kind of like, because he couldn't really play. He would actually play with his back to the audience because <laughs> so they couldn't see, he couldn't play. Um, that was pre Ringo. But I think Paul at that time was playing guitar, maybe? I'm not sure. I have to, I have to do more research on that. I've read so many books on the, on the Beatles. Um, uh, some good, some bad. Um, but um, the uh, I, there's oh, George Martin. In fact, I was going to talk about George Martin today. Um, if, if Timothy shows up, but uh, the uh, um, George Martin book, he has he had a, he has a book out called All You Need Is Ears, and the first third is about his early life and up to the point where he was he was. Um, uh, he met the Beatles, and then the middle third is all about the Beatles, and the last third is post Beatles. So it's kind of like the book is broken up into three sections. It's like the first section is, you know, 40 years of his life, and then it's 10 years of his life, and then it's the next 20 years or whatever. Or maybe he was, he might have been 30. He was still pretty young when I guess he started working with the Beatles. So maybe like the first 30 years of his life. But it's, uh, I've reread the book several times, but just the middle third. <laughs> I read the whole book once and then I went back and read it a few times because I just, the stories are great and his perspective is great. And I've been in that studio and stood in that booth. You have to go up these stairs to get to it. The stairs have been there since the, whenever the World War II or before. And the Beatles went up and down those stairs a thousand times. I mean, it was Mecca. I, I had chills the entire time I was in, in Abbey Road Studio 2. I'm hoping to go back next year. I've been told that that might be a, a thing. Um, so that'll be fun. Uh, so let's see. Um, so let's see now. We've been working on this. We've been working on these pentatonic scales. And the, the concept for this is that um, I've done three different positions so far. I've got two more to do. The concept of this is that, oh, I need to turn on my light. Hold on a second. It's just a little bit dark. Apologize. All right.
That should probably be a sippable offense if I forget to turn on my lights. So everybody take a sip. I'll have to instruct Gary to add that to the to the Tom command sips. Um, okay, so um, the concept here is um, that uh, if you want, you can play three different pentatonic scales over you. Oh, you play a lot of different pentatonic scales over these chords, but um, but you've got three chords basically in the blues: the one, the four, the five, and they're all dominant seventh chords. So there is no single major key center that you can that you can uh, look to or a box you can check off and say this song is in the key of G major because it G major scale won't work it won't work over the G7 chord it won't work over the C7 chord um, it would work over the D7 chord but you know it's it's kind of a little annoying uh, but it's if you play D mixolydian then it works it's the same thing so um, so, so that's the first thing you realize about the blues um, but when you play pentatonic scales, you're, you've only got five notes, so you've, you've got a little bit more forgiveness. And when you play a blues scale, which is really just a pentatonic scale with one added note, a flat fifth, um, that also works really well. So you can get away with playing a G minor pentatonic throughout the whole um, blues. Uh, there's just every now and then there's a note you're like, eh, that F over the C chord doesn't sound very good, or that B flat over the D chord doesn't sound that very good. So what I did um, is came up with two scales that we can use to accommodate those um, things rubbing against each other. And um, so if we switch to, if we take that F and go down to E um, in the G minor pentatonic, then we create what's called a G minor six pentatonic, which is uh, as um, uh, what a D rightfully, oh, I, I use uh, elixirs and these are tens. Um, right now they feel like nines. Les Pauls are always, I you know, tend to overbend on a Les Paul, but um, but if you if you take that F and go down to E, you get get what's kind of like the. You get kind of that happy BB King sound, um, and so. Um, and and this, this is the weirdest one of all the scales we've learned so far. But it sounds great when you go to that C chord and you make that little change. It sounds great. And the cool thing about the G minor 6 is you can stay in it. It'll work great over the G chord. I create, Like I said, it creates a happy sound. In fact, it, it, it almost works in some ways more better over the G7 chord than it does over the C7 chord. But but what I'm trying to do is trying to make, you know, teach you to make a slight accommodation. Again, you know, we talk, I talk about soloing, and soloing is just a series of forks in the road. And you can go this way or that way. you got two choices. And um, and so with this, this learning a couple scale modifications, little teeny one-note change in a scale can help you modify. There was a great lesson in guitar player. Um, I may do a, a jam on it, but it was like... It was three chords. It was G7 to C7 to, to uh, E flat 9. So it was G7 to C9 to E flat 9 to D7 sharp 5. Um, and it had a different scale for each one. You know, G minor pentatonic and G minor 6. But when I went to the E flat 9, I'm like, well, how is it going to do a one note change? Well, it just. It just. It added the flat fifth, but got rid of the fifth of the blues. And that's another another variation on this minor pentatonic that we can do to accommodate another chord. And it, it really works really well over that E9. I'm like, oh, that's so sweet. And then the one that they did that didn't work as well, I thought, was the was to put a sharp seven on the G minor pentatonic uh, to accommodate the D7 chord. Because you see, you still have an F in it, but you also have an F sharp. That's this is the Jimi Hendrix chord. Wondering how to play that? Here, I'll show you. Uh, it's called E7 sharp nine. Okay, don't let a name scare you. All right, names can sometimes be more. You know, F is hard. <laughs> well, F chord must be easy, right? No, and or B. B. B is an easy chord, right? No, B is a hard chord. 
Uh, but E minor seven at eleven is just all six strings open, so it sounds complex, but it's not. So E minor E seven sharp nine is um, you don't have to play the to make it a movable chord. I'm not gonna I'm gonna put nothing on the bottom there. It's a seven six seven eight. It actually is a great little chord. Fits the hand wonderfully. You know, it's just it's almost like if you just threw your hand on a neck, it would that would be the chord that would naturally occur on the fretboard. Um, and this is an example where it's an E7 sharp 9. So what we have is an E7 chord. Right? With a with a, a ninth, but it's sh it's sharp. So the ninth would normally be an F sharp. So technically, in this case, in the E7 sharp 9, technically that's an F double sharp. Okay, we have a G sharp and an F double sharp, not G flat. Uh, or G natural, sorry. So F double sharp is the same as G natural, which is stupid, but that's just because it's a sharp nine. So uh, anyway, uh, this that tension is is what makes it kind of kind of one of those something smells bad chords. And there's a few ways to play this chord, but this is the most common way. Jimi Hendrix also did it like that for uh, Fox's. Foxy lady. Foxy. Um, and that's just playing an F7 chord, F sharp 7 chord, and any, any of the pinky on the top two frets, uh, top two strings at, at the, uh, that's a harder version of this. But it sounds great. Sounds like a TV chord, right? Oh, Timothy's here. Good, perfect. Because, <laughs> Timothy, I'm going to answer your question here instead of. Because it just, I would have been, I still would have been typing. I started answering the question an hour ago on my way to Starbucks. And I was like, yeah, I would still be typing now if I were to answer that question. And I'm going to read Timothy's question so you all can know what it is. Hey, Daniel, good to see you. Did he? <clears throat> Jimmy did, had big hands. That's, that's not surprising. Um, strong hands, too. Very strong hands. You can tell by the way he plays. Uh, there was a reckless abandon in his playing that resonates. I, you know, I've always liked Steve Lukather. I know he's a pop guitar player, plays in Toto and all that. But one of the things I love about um, Steve Lukather's playing is his reckless abandon. But somehow he manages to stay in the key and everything sounds great, but it just sounds like he's flailing. Um, and he's like, you know, what's he going to do next kind of thing? Uh, I felt like Terry Kath was like that too. Terry Kath's one of the best guitar players of all time. One of my favorites. Um, so let me see. Let me read. No, no it's, it's a great question. Uh, but Timothy, it was a question that's been answered. Um, uh, it's been. It's a question that has been answered here. Uh, now, what am I looking for? I'm looking for yeah, this. Um, through through these lessons over the, over the many 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 months of the the. Uh, what was it? Two weeks to flat? Fifteen days to flatten the curve? <laughs> we're still flattening that curve. Like really? All right. So where is that? Okay, Timothy. Ba -ba -ba, there's that one. Oh, I replied. So I have to click that off because now it, it hides it. Okay. Uh, I really have to give you praise on your site. I'm gonna read that just because it pumps me up here. Uh, so full of great lessons. I introduced myself on the introduction Discord. Great uh, question. I see. G7, C7, D7 is dominant chords in the key of C, F, and G. The G minor pentatonic is throwing me off with a B flat, uh, 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 except in F as this is diatonic. I may be overthinking here, but I'm wondering why G minor pentatonic is a choice over G as uh, B flat is not diatonic to those keys. Yeah, and the old, you know, technically the 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 home key to C7 is F major. And so we're, every one of these notes is an F major. And I'm going to go back to this pentatonic shape here. So I'm going to go back to the first lesson in this series. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the chord progression there. See, I need to add. Oh, wait. Did, I must have that. Because if I deleted it, it wouldn't be on this. So where is that? Can I just copy and paste? Ooh, that would be sweet if I could just do like a copy paste thing. Look at that. I can. Oh, <laughs> you know how much time that would have saved me <laughs> knowing that I could do that. All right. 
So, okay, now I know. I'll probably forget, though. That Friday, I won't remember that I can do that. Okay, so, um, so Timothy kind of states um, in his question, um, I may be overthinking here. Yes, that is definitely true, all right? However, uh, mu music is one of those things where um, artists create and music teachers analyze. <laughs> so, so Timothy is is kind of at, at, at this with this question is taking more of the analytical approach. It's like why why you know why does this work or why is this acceptable when it shouldn't be? Okay, and I mentioned it just a short minute ago that um, I was going to talk about if Timothy showed up, I was going to talk about George Martin. And I've told you guys this story probably at least once. And I think it's in the book that I was just talking about, All You Need Is Ears. And it was early in the Beatles' uh, career, and, and they were doing, they were recording Twist and Shout. Let's shake it up, baby, now. Twist, twist and shout. When he sings, when John sings that. Twist and shout. Twist and shout. We have to go. Oh, that's it. Okay, yeah. So, so uh, uh, George Harrison comes down, or George uh, Martin comes down. And he goes, John, what are you singing there? And John's like, I don't know. <laughs> and John, John, what note is that? And he goes, I, I, I have no idea. It's, it's you know, a note. And so, George goes, or, uh, yeah. George Martin says, is that an? Are you singing an F sharp? Because that's the, the, it's a D chord. So F sharp's the third. So sing. Shout, sing that F sharp. Oh, okay, okay. So they do another take, and John sings the F sharp, like, perfectly. And it's like everybody in the room knows that that's not the right note. And he goes, okay, okay, okay. So you must be, George Mar George Martin says, you must be singing the flat nine, uh, or the flat third, the flatted third. So sing the F. So sing that F natural. Okay, so John's like, okay, bah, bah, bah. he finds it, okay. Boom. Twist and shout. Everybody in the room knows it's wrong. <laughs> it's like, no, it's not. George. That was when George Martin realized that there were notes between notes. Um, and blues singers had known this forever. That's what they'd ever done, you know. And uh, blues guitar players had known this forever. And so, really, the... Tim, Timothy, with the first time that somebody hit that 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 uh, flat third over the G or over any whatever you know uh, the flat third over a major chord, the first time that happened, somebody said that's wrong. That's not right. It's like Charlie Parker. He was playing flat nines and flat fives and sharp fives and sharp nines, and it's like, wait, you can't, you know. That's not, those aren't right notes. Uh, but the billionth time, by the time it got to be billionth time <laughs> being played, everybody was like, yeah, no, that's exactly the right note. And that's what's happened. You've got this thing that it's just, it, and I talk about this all the time. Music is about tension, tension and release. And when you play that, when you play that B flat over the G major chord, and, and I, I don't want to say G major seven, obviously I wouldn't do it over G major seven. G seven has a certain, um, altered ability, okay? When we play jazz, okay, we can alter the the we can alter the two chord, but the five chord is where the fun happens. See, I could do a an A flat five flat nine. I can do a sharp five flat nine. I can do a sharp five sharp nine. I can do a flat five sharp nine. Not easily. Um, so all of those will work as a transition chord to the to the one chord. So um, so the five chord is is the one that you can kind of mess with the most in music. And here we have a, a, a genre of music, the blues, where every chord is a five chord, as you duly as you rightfully noted, right? You said, oh well, G seven is the five of C, so we're in C here, and C seven is the five. You don't want to think that hard about it. 
So like I said, you can play one scale. In fact, I'll do it right now. I'm going to play the, the jam track, which I'll post it here, a link to it in a second here. Um, sorry. But see, I want to, I can bend that B up to a B, a little bit, or that B flat up. I'm not getting all the way up to B. I could get all the way. If I wanted to go all the way to B, I could. But just hitting at it is good enough. Now, the, the, flat, the B flat works fine over the C7, as you also noted, because that is in the key of F. But it doesn't technically work over the G, because we, but we have the B and the B flat ringing out against each other. But because it's the blues, that's what 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 makes it the blues, okay? If I were to play purely mixolydian scales, which if you go back a few lessons, you can you see some lessons on three mixolydian scales, the three the three different mixolydian scales for each of the seventh chords. You can see me talk, we, we talked about that. And that's a little bit more, it's a diatonic scale, it's a little jazzier sounding. And it's fine, you can go back and forth between all of these. If over the G7 chord, I could do, G minor pentatonic, I could do G minor blues. I could do the G minor six. Uh, I could do G uh, mixolydian. I have a G minor, I have a G mixolydian pentatonic that I like. I could do all of those over the G seven chord. So you've got lots of options when you're playing the blues. Um, but again, that B flat, playing against the B creates tension. And music, like I've said a thousand times, music is all about tension and release. And you, when you're soloing or when you're writing a melody, which is kind of what you're doing when you're soloing, um, you are the master of that. And so you are the one that's gonna determine how soon things are gonna get resolved. And if you did everything really inside, <laughs> over each chord and just play the arpeggios and never played a note that wasn't part of the chord, well, everything's gonna be so inside that there's not gonna be any tension. But that's when you start, you start, you hit that note and it's like, it wants to go there. And if you did go there, you know, then that's a that's almost more of a happier blues. It could be considered um, country blues. You know, uh, maybe a little bit of rockabilly. Um, but then to just sit on that B flat, that's more blues. That gets more Chicago. That becomes more Kansas City. That becomes more New Orleans. Um, and so, you, uh, Carl Verheyen's really good at knowing all the different players. You know, I, I he was my teacher in the '80s, my guitar teacher in the '80s, um, and he's a very, very good guitar player, very successful session guitar player. And um, I wanted to be him when I grew up. <laughs> and he. Uh, He's really good though. He can like you name a blues player, and he can he knows everything that they're he can play in all of their styles. You know, BB King, it didn't matter. Albert King, uh, uh, Buddy Guy, he would know licks immediately. Oh, that's a Buddy Guy lick. Oh, that's per you know he would know that. So, um, uh, let's see. Uh, so so. Uh, yeah, so it's it's it kind of creates a blue sound, but it's a tension. And so, if I sit on that B B flat for a long time, like if I over the jam, jam track, I could sit on that. See, it's like there, I resolved it. You're in control of when things get resolved or when things get when the tension gets released. Um, you know, ten, and tension tension can be created so many ways. We've been talking about not playing creates tension, right? Like a great example is like here.
that tension. You know, where I was like, here, nope. All right. So you can, I mean, tension can come from a lot of different places. Uh, and, and I didn't even go any kind of really weird notes in there. I pretty much stayed within the pentatonics, but, um, but yeah, so, so that at some point somebody started playing it and then pretty soon everybody started imitating it before, you know, it was socially accepted to play B flat over a G chord. Um, even though music theory wise, it makes no sense, but none of those early blues players ever studied music theory. They never had a music class. They just played. And so that's what I'm saying. You know, um, uh, there are pe pen plenty of people that will say, oh, that's not correct. That's wrong. And then five years later, they're like, here's how I explain it. It's how it's correct. You know, the same person. So uh, it's, it's all, you know, I, I think about the Beatles too. Like... You know, they would use that minor four chord, which is not in the key of, in this case, G. And yet it created this, now that's a very classical thing. It predates, you know, it goes back to Beethoven, Mozart, and Bach, and everybody used it before them. But, um, and it was a common musical device to create tension. Um, and so, uh, uh, but some people will go, well, that's not, that song, that chord's not in the song. You can't, you can't do that. It's not in the key. It's like, but it works. <laughs> it does, you know, and so, you know, people come by later and analyze why every note that Charlie Parker played was perfect. Whereas at the time he was like, no, those are all wrong notes here. You're, you're, you're bothering us. Go away. Go practice on the Brooklyn bridge and leave us alone, which is what he did. So, uh, but he was right. And, uh, he heard something. He, his ear was ahead of everybody else's. Uh, Charlie Parker is one of my, if probably my favorite jazz musician. Uh, when I was a kid, I did a book report on him, which is funny. Cause it was like, gosh, and it was even before, I mean, I played guitar, but I just, I don't know why I like, I think as I like to, you know, they called him the bird, you know? And so anyway, yes, exactly. Timothy, the four part Carl. Yeah. And I did the same thing. The analysis, the figured bass. <laughs> yeah. No, I used to, I, I did, I have a hymnal somewhere around here that I, I went through and did figured bass through the entire hymnal. Uh, it's, yeah. Yeah. And we're not going to go there. Trust me. It's a completely unnecessary knowledge for this particular forum. So, okay. So we're going to go back to, I'm going to spend one, this just today on this. We've already done, I think a couple days on Saturday, Monday, and today on these shapes. Uh, so we're going to do some snippets, 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 snippets. I love saying snippet as everyone knows. Um, and what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, I, I should have done the blues versions of these, but I didn't, but that's all right. Um, um, we're, I may add some blues notes in here, um, but we're going to do little snippets and then maybe come up with some licks. I'll have you play along with me or imitate me or play along if you can match. I'll go slow and, um, and it'll help us kind of get some of these shapes down. And again, the, the, the great thing about this area is that it's not a great thing. <laughs> The great thing about this area is that we don't know it very well. So we're going to, we're spending an extra day here just to kind of help us get more familiar with this. So we don't have a gap in our knowledge. Like, woo, I can play, I can play up here. Woo, and, uh, and then you go up here, you know, uh, don't want that. You want to have complete knowledge up and down the neck. And that's where one little trick for that again is, um, playing, um, the pentatonic scales on one string, go up each string. So, you know, I, um, you should be able to play each of the scales, these, all these minor pentatonics, you should be able to play them on one string. Um, and that will help you transition up and down the fretboard. Okay. So that's kind of what we want to do. All right. So what did, what did Bruce say that Rick is laughing at? Yeah, hit that like, share on social media. Yeah, please. Yeah, put me up on forums. Reddit, you know, say, I, I got, 
I went from 200, no, from 800 subscribers to 1,200 subscribers in an afternoon because somebody said, "Why isn't this guy more, pop, you know, more well known on YouTube?" Um, and uh, he's uh, okay. Oh, the third and flat third interchangeable. Uh, oh, John, let's see the blues. Of course, I've been learning for, indicates. Uh, it teaches that the third and flat third can be used interchangeably. In fact, the flat third is one of the is yeah, the blues note. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm not exactly sure what they're referencing. Um, I, I I think if if it's interesting because, like I said before, I, I could have put for that second scale over here, Ugh, over here. <laughs> I wouldn't think I could make a lousy weatherman. Okay, this one, I could have put C minor pentatonic, right? Because I'm using G minor pentatonic for the G7 chord and D minor pentatonic for the D7 chord. But why didn't I use C minor pentatonic for the C7 chord? It just doesn't work. And the C minor pentatonic has that, that flat third. So I wouldn't say necessarily the flat third is always a good go-to because, like, it just... Oh, now, if the song was in the key of C, then, yeah, I would use the flat third. But, like, I just don't like the sound of this. And it's, and it's probably because nobody does it. It doesn't work. And why is that? It, you know, I, I can't really explain that. I don't know if it's because historically nobody's really done it, or is it because that because the, the audience and you know that the song is in the key of G and an E flat note in the key of G makes even less sense than, than a B flat note in the key of G. So, um, yeah, and I would say, I would say, Tim, I would say that there's three notes there, not two, not B flat and B. I would say there's B flat, B, and then the note between, between B and B flat. Um, that's almost a lot of players. B.B. King would do that. He would not. He would not go to the B natural, but he would. He wouldn't sit on the B flat. Even when I do this, right? Play that with me. We're gonna be back down. Oh, sorry. Let's go back down to the first scale. I hate to do this, but it's okay. Um, you, I'm, on, I'm just playing the the second and third string. Uh, six. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's Wednesday. Six. Uh, three, five, three. Okay, and that's the B flat, and I'm kind of bending it up. And if I go all the way, all the way to B, it's it sounds great. It sounds pretty. It sounds inside, uh, but John, thank you so much for doing that. I really appreciate that. Um, oh, I touched my face, didn't I? <laughs> That's a sipping game. I should have a million subscribers just for the just for the drinking game alone, right? I should probably post the drinking game rules here on the. I could I could put a screenshot of that and post that too. Um, hey, Jan, good to see you. Um, so, yeah, so the B, the B natural is totally fine. Um, so when you, when you start getting there, you know, it's funny because when you get the B flat in there, in the B, and then you got the C, which is about scale, and you put the blues note in there, you, you got a whole, we're almost getting to the part where we can justify every single note chromatically and make it work. And that's kind of what ten, creating tension, and if I play the flat nine, that's kind of weird, but actually it kind of works, that A flat kind of works better than the E flat word. That's the one note that I'm like, yeah, stay away from that. Um, but the E natural works and the F, and then I could even make the F sharp work if it's in in, in the uh, chromatic passing tone, or yeah, passing tone. See that F sharp? As long as you're just there for a second, I can hear horn sections go ba da da ba da da ba da da ba da da ba ba da. But da 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 ba da right? You can hear a horn section doing something like that. And so, if you get it fast enough on an octave, that would be like a horn section. Um, so that's, so yeah, I can almost just vibrate note. But yeah, the 
do a lick like that, which is bluesy, but also kind of to me a little bit um, rockabilly or country. And who was it that asked me about that? It was uh, a veto. So if I see a veto, I'll show him that lick because he was asking me about that as well. He's like, what's the lick you did at 2253? <laughs> so, or 5223 or whatever it was. Hey, Mark, what's going on? Mark's a phenomenal blues. Okay, I'm going to stop talking about the blues now because <laughs> I'm just going to, he's going to go, well, actually, Tom, that's not true. <laughs> Gotta be careful. Mark's a great teacher, so take copy that name and go to his and subscribe to Mark uh, because he's a phenomenal teacher, particularly about the blues. So I'm going to stop teaching the blues now. No, no, I'm just kidding. Okay, so we're up here now at the... Uh, uh, Mark, what we've been doing is going through... Um, uh, 141, wow, what's that? What's 141, Pepper? Pepper, oh my gosh, <laughs> I just read your comment and I realized, Pepper, good, welcome back. Um, okay, so um, we've got, we've been going up the neck, we started in the third position with three different pentatonic scales, okay, and the three pentatonic scales we're using for the blues, and we're changing, so what I'm what I'm having everybody do, Mark, is, is change, the uh, change the scale to match the chord. Now, it's not how you have to play the blues at all. Um, I, you can play one scale through the whole progression, and that's, that's kind of playing the overarching way. Uh, I always talk about soloing has, soloing is just a series of forks in the road. And this fork is in particular is like, okay, I can play one scale over the whole blues progression, or I can play over each individual chord, right? Um, and so this is a basic chord progression, basic blues chord progression. Um, and so we've been doing uh, the different scales in the G minor pentatonic up here in this position. <laughs> is there and then we did the minor six pentatonic which is kind of the B I call the happy blues or the BB King blues and that's this one and then we'll, you know what we'll do is we'll review all these right now okay um, and then and that's a weirdest one I mean I have to admit I haven't played this scale but I'm loving it over the C chord that when I play this like, I love the sound of that it's just so kind of in the pocket for me. And then over the D over the D7 chord, we could play the, like I said, uh, Steve Ray Vaughn would do that a lot, where he would do that. Uh, he would do that uh, uh, over the over the four chord, uh, five chord, sorry, the five chord is D. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and just review these three scales. And then what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do some snippet play. And that's where we just play two strings and just kind of work them a little bit and I'll play some licks and you copy me. But let's start out doing the scale. So this this one, the 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 first two scales are gonna have position shifts. So we're just gonna have to figure it out. But basically we're gonna start on the, on the I'm gonna go to my bridge or neck a uh, bridge pickup so so it's not so woofy. Um so at the first finger at the eighth fret of the bottom string of the sixth string we're gonna go eight ten eight ten eight ten so that part of the G minor pentatonic is super easy and those are the same six notes that you have here in pentatonic number one this is pentatonic number three and it's the worst of the pentatonics I and, and uh, mark if you're still there pentatonic number three that's what I call it it's just the third pentatonic going up um, and it, it's just it's it's the only pentatonic that has only two major roots and two minor roots, whereas the others at least have three of one. It also has a position shift, which none of the other ones do. Um, so, And it's far away from pentatonic number one. So it's just one that we don't tend to get good at, which is, means that that's one I want to, like, hammer. Uh, one of the, you know, anytime I, there's something, there's like a gap in my knowledge, I really try to hammer that gap. Okay, now we have a position shift. So we're going to go down to the seventh fret, and then we're going to do... 7th <laughs> and 10 with the pinky, and then we're going to go back to the position 8th fret and go 8, 11. And those four notes are the same as these four, which we do, we, we're very familiar with. But I, I like this, you know, the, the availability of this, that lick is, is harder here than it is up here. So in some ways it makes pentatonic three a little bit better in that for that particular lick. Okay, now, um, and then we finish off with 
another another eight ten. And of course we have eight ten because it's the same as the bottom string. So anything we do to the bottom string, we're gonna to do to the top string. Okay, so let's play the whole scale up and down together slowly. Again, so we're in the bottom string, eight, ten, eight, ten, eight, ten, seven, ten, eight, eleven. 8, 10. And then backwards would be 10, 8, 11, 8, 10, 7, 10, 8, 10, 8, 10, 8. Now, I wouldn't say Mark exclusively teaches on the blues, but he really specializes on it. And he's also a full-time teacher. So if you're looking for a teacher, I don't know, you're probably doing Zoom lessons right now. Um, uh, I'm not teaching privately pretty, for the most part. I've got a couple students here and there, um, but it's it's pretty rare. In fact, I've got a lesson today after this. <laughs> I've got to remember to teach it. <laughs> That's the part of the reason why I don't teach lessons anymore, because I kept forgetting that I had a lesson coming over. and I'd be deep in thought writing some music for something and, and then, then door, knock on the door and I'd be like, who is that? And it's like, oh, it's my 12 o'clock. You know, it's like, oh, dang it. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was totally that, you know, kind of uh, the interruptions. I had, to, I had to put an end to that after 35 years of privately teaching. I taught from the age of 15. At, at 20, I had 40 students a week at a store. So I was in a box at a store. I, Mark had a store. I don't think you have it anymore, right? Or do you still have a store? I but uh, I taught in the store, and boy, that box! I remember that room. Like I would leave at the end of my day, and that box is to be around my head for like an hour, and it would slowly expand out, and the world would open up, and it was just like, oh man, it was brutal. Okay, so let's do the G minor six pentatonic. This is a weird one, but all we're doing is we're taking that seventh. Uh, in this case, the beat, the if you look at the scale up here, again, I'm a lousy weatherman, right? There, okay, here we go. So that's the G minor pentatonic. There's the G minor six. So you notice the only difference between these two scales here are is the F becomes an E. And that creates that happy sound. But what it does is it accommodates the E note in the C7 chord. So it really works really well over that. Okay, so here we go. Fingering wise, you, you know, you can do whatever works for you, but I'm gonna just use first finger on the eighth and then third finger. And I'm gonna go down here and use my first finger on the seventh and then my pinky on the 10th, go back up to the 8th and go 8, 10 again. <laughs> and then I'm going to go back down to 7, 9. I think that's probably one. It just depends. If I'm playing a snippet, if I'm playing just like the 4th and 5th string, I might do a pure like position playing where every finger gets a, a fret. But if I'm going to just kind of play through it like this, I might do it with just leading with my first finger playing the bottom note and just Go with it. Um, okay, now we're at the top, uh, second string. We're going to be um, the same as the pan G minor pentatonic. It's going to be 8, 11, 8, 10. So backwards, we have 10, 8, 11, 8. This is a great moment right here. When you hit this, that right there. Oof, that's such a great... That's the magic right there, man. That is the beautiful note. So, and so I might play that snippet. That's my favorite snippet of this particular shape and position. Um, I, you know, I'm not even thinking about this note here. So I'm not worrying about. It. I might go to that, go to that B flat. So I don't have to necessarily shift down to get this D note. But we're gonna do it because we're playing all of the scale descending. So here we go from the top again. Tenth fret, eighth fret. Um, oh, one hundred percent, Mark. I'll talk about that too. In fact, I know you. We we we're in the same boat. I, I've released three records, and and I you know, to release a record, you got to be a lawyer, you've got to be a manager, you've got to be an art director, you've got you know, there's so many things that skills that I don't have, and that's why none of my records were successful. You know, and it's like. I decided I just hate doing records because I don't like other, all the jobs that come with come with making it a success. So, okay, 10, all right, 10, 8, uh, 11, 8, 
um, nine, seven, sorry, my brain just shut off for a second. 10, eight, <laughs> for a second. Uh, 10, seven, 10, eight. So uh, when we snip at this, we're gonna probably play right here. And again, I'm gonna probably have to go to, the, go to that pickup just so it's not too woofy in the room. All right, the last one is a G minor pentatonic, uh, which um, is a is pentatonic number five. Uh, you notice with all the the, the notes there. Uh, see, see if I can point to it successfully. Okay, down there. <laughs> I have to think. Uh, you see that all those notes there. Hey, Franco, Franco, good to see you. Um, Oh, that's funny. Oh, I'm glad, Mark. <laughs> so uh, let's see. So the the uh, so you can see that this is the this is the bottom of pentatonic number one. So here's D minor pentatonic number one. Okay, but we want to stay just for learning's sake. See now, if I was playing, if I was soloing, I might be tempted to sort of. Although I do like some some of the things about this scale, like um, the the blues note, where the blues note falls in this. This uh, pentatonic scale, I love the way it plays. Um, but uh, I might be, if I was soloing live in a situation, I might be tempted to go up to this D minor pentatonic for that. But I don't know. Anyway, I do like the I do like the way this scale plays. So let's play it together. And this one we're going to be in. This is the only one that doesn't have a position shift. So we have second finger. We'll start with the second finger. Probably not how I would play it in when the rubber meets the road. But for academic purposes, we'll learn. It we'll do it this way. Second finger on the eighth fret, then tenth fret. So the pinky's going to be busy. The pinky's going to get a note on every string. Then so eight, ten, eight, ten, seven, ten, seven, ten, eight, ten, eight, ten. Backwards. Ten, eight, ten, eight, ten, seven, ten, seven, ten, eight, ten. Hey, sorry, am I getting too loud? Is it getting... I'm going to turn down this mic just a skosh because I feel like... Uh, oh. Oh, 100%. I would love to do that. I would love to do that, Mark. Uh, you'll have to show me how to do that. We could do a live stream together. That would be really, really dope. Um, we could do it on Zoom. I think it's probably the best way to do it. And then you could record it, right? We could broadcast that. Or can we go live? Or does it have to be... Can we do a split screen? Yeah, I don't, we'll have to talk. <laughs> we'll talk on the phone, okay? We'll try to plan this. I normally see Mark at the NAM show, or sometimes see Mark at the NAM show. Hey, Richard, good to see you again. Flint, Michigan, that's right. My, uh, my, one of my first, my first friend as a kid was uh, moved to Flint, Michigan, uh, Dick Skipworth. I don't know if you know Dick Skipworth, but he, I don't think he still lives in Flint, but he grew up in Flint. But it wasn't like Paul Meyer. Paul Meyer and I had a band together. Dick and I didn't have a band together. Okay, so um, so those are the three shapes. Okay, so let me let me do a little bracket around. Oh, oh let me uh, post a link for the for the uh, um, the blues jam, so you can you can practice at home. And again, my my. The more important thing than soloing over this blues progression is for you to be able to play this blues progression, and the um, the chords are written there on the in the video. But you need to be able to play the blues ten times in a row without making a mistake. In other words, ten times in a row you need to go all the way through the progression without making it an eleven bar progression without making it a 13 bar progression without forgetting the five chord without forgetting to go to the four chord you, and and I would use this pattern I could give you a simpler blues progression but really again the byproduct the huge byproduct of you being able to play the blues without blanking it up is that others will want to jam with you first off and the second benefit is now Nothing, when you're playing over the blues progression, nothing will surprise you. You'll be ready for that four chord. You'll be ready for that five chord. That was my biggest struggle, particularly that turnaround, the last four bars, where you got the D7. That last D chord would throw me. 
And like there were all the good players had these great turnarounds that they would do. I've heard Mark play, and he's got some great turnarounds on on the five court. And um, could do a video on that on turn on the five court turnarounds. I think I, I'll probably do the key of E or something maybe, so I could do. That. I don't know, but I'm again I'm not a great blues player. So, um, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna um, just play the G minor pentatonic, and I'm gonna play. Okay, we're gonna play the four, fourth and fifth string because we already did the top string. We already did that. Um, and um, you'll notice if we look at the each of the three scales, the reason I'm choosing uh, the fourth and fifth string is that because you can see the modifications um, with the three scales in in that grouping. Okay, so for G minor we have eight, ten, eight, ten. And I'm going to give you the letter names of the notes because I find that that's really important to know too. No, no, you're not disrupting my lesson, Mark. Not at all. No, trust me. If you were a regular viewer, you'd know that I'm always squirrel. <laughs> They're used to it. In fact, I usually see the squirrel icon down there, or the, the emoji. Um, someone's going to post it now. Um, so there's the there's the G minor, okay? And then the G minor 6 would be here, 7, 10, uh, 8, 10. Okay, and then the... the uh, D minor pentatonic is going to be seven or eight, ten, seven, ten. It's almost the opposite of the G minor six. So those, so I could play through this progression just there. So check this out. I'll just use those that grouping. Time. We're not going to do, I'm not going to make you have to think that fast. Because uh, I don't know how many of you had coffee. So here's just a G chord. So we're going to play a little, a little bit over the G chord here. And so now we're playing F to G. So we're landing on the root. Okay, I'm going to be on this one. Exactly. All right, so now just play the F. Right? That's tension. That F wants to go to the G, but don't give it to him. Make him wait for it. It's music. That's what music is. You can do a lot of things to one note. And in fact, I've got a video coming 50 ways to play one note, the same note. I, I'm I'm almost there. I've got to make it. I've got to make it though. It's gonna take me a while. Oh, okay. Thanks. I'm gonna put up the Discord. Sorry. Okay, you guys play along. Take you to the um, Discord as an invite, and it will um, teach you kind of the rules and all that. Okay. Oh. All right, I'm back. I'm back in a second here. Okay. Okay, so that was just F F F F F F F F G. Okay, now we're gonna do B flat. B-flat, C, B-flat, G. Martin 
guitar was chasing a squirrel. Fill me at 11. You just sit on that B flat. And if we want, we can go up, we can go up to that B natural, which is totally legit, but it's not part of the scale here. Okay, so that B flat creates tension, right? And it gets resolved with that leg, okay? Now the C also creates tension. Okay? So you should have these mastered, those, those four notes mastered by now. It's really nice too because they fit great in your hand. This is like, hey, I can just use my first and third finger. I'm going to add the blue note to it. Blue note, here we go. that technically is, this is the five right here, the D note's a five in the key of G minor, G minor pentatonic. We are adding the flat five. Holly likes that. I'm just, I'm using the five, the flat five as a grace note. I'm just, grace note means you're just on it for a second and you're on your way to the note you want to go to. Great note too, the B flat. See I'm, how short I'm on. I'm on that B flat. I could also the, the F could be a great note. That's a great note right there. If it's if you're going very quickly, you're only on a note for a split second. That's called a great note. If I'm on it longer than like say an eighth note or sixteenth note or as long as that, then it's not. It would actually have value. So in other words, this would be like an eighth note. See that would actually be written differently. Music notation. We're not going to worry about music notation. There's not a lot of music notation for blues players. I mean, there, there is, but blues players don't learn that way. Okay. All right. So now let's go to the next snippet. We're going to go to the G minor six chord uh, scale, and that is going to be over the C chord. So I'm going to pull up the C chord. There's a C chord. Okay. While that's playing, we'll. we'll Relearn it real quick, okay? So we're gonna start there on the seventh fret of the fifth string and go 10, and then the B flat, which is the eighth fret and the 10th. And here's our root, this is the C note. So that note, those two notes are the same as the G minor pentatonic. Let's play it backwards and go 10, A, 10, So we're, that's why I, the G minor six pattern, I would never play, just so you know, Holly, I would never in a million years play that scale like that. Like straight up and down. I probably would never do that. But I would use bits and pieces of it because it's so beautiful. So go. Okay, that, now I'm touching my face. I'm going to take a sip. One of our drinking game rules. E, G, and then you go B flat, okay, E, G, B flat, G, and, uh, if you want to sing along with it, that's not a bad idea. Okay, now we're going to go up to C. that slower. Notice I'm using my first and third finger for all that. I'm not being real purist about fingering on this. I want to keep dominant fingers on it. I can do it more pure. But it's about getting that fatty third finger on that note. Do that, that's cool. Oh, you're welcome, Timothy. Now I'm emphasizing
emphasizing this string because that's the different, that's the note, that's the string that's different from the previous scale. Now, so this is the B flat, this is the seventh of the C chord. So this is the one that we could sit on and create tension, delayed gratification of going to the C note. Almost think of yourself a horn section. Now, if it weren't so low, I might play play the E and this B flat. Creates nice tension, and it's the guide tones. It's the third and the seventh of the C7 chord. Dude, you can do that. That's cool. Oh, XL or e, uh, easy. Good to see you. I hope you don't have me on like a 60 inch TV. I'm sorry. <laughs> Here, let me make it better for you. Here, I'll do this. Oh, oh dang it. That's not what I wanted to do. Let me grab this. Yeah, that's much better. Except that's not the scale we're using. Let me grab the scale I'm using and put it on my face. So you don't have to look at me. Easy's watching on his TV. All right, well, I've totally screwed up everything. I've totally messed up everything now. There we go. Okay. All for a joke. <laughs> okay. Oh, you can still see my face. that your audience that that, uh, that that release okay all right let me stop the music we'll go to the next chord I'll stop the I'll stop the humor oh gosh I keep grabbing the wrong there we go. I have to click on it twice? That's weird. All right. Let me just re try to reshape this. Oh, I know. The best way to do it is just to go up on top like this. Boop. Make it the same size and then bring it down here. And everything's happy. It almost looks like it says G meth pentatonic. <laughs> Am I wrong? G meth? <laughs> Why would I want to play in G meth? All right, so let's do the D minor pentatonic, okay? And that's gonna be. Yes, yeah, do not. <laughs> yeah, do not uh, let your phone die in case your pop, at, your dad accidentally shoots somebody. <laughs> we'll see you soon, Gary. Okay. Um, so this shape is going to be, over the D7 is going to be 8, 10, 7, 10. So it's kind of the opposite. And there's the note difference. See, before it was 8, 10, 8, 10. That's a B flat. We're taking that B flat down to A to accommodate that A in the A D7 chord. And again, I, I always think of Stevie Ray Vaughan when I, when, I do the, when, I, when I do that scale over the 5 chord. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you totally read that as, yeah. It totally looks like that. G meth pentatonic. I know. It's a fast pentatonic, I guess. Um, okay, so let me grab the D chord here. Let me find the D chord. Where are you, D chord? Okay, you're back here. Here we go. Now, a little hard because this sounds like the one chord in the key of D. But... So, and we don't have a D note, okay? There's no D in this snippet. So we're, we don't get the joy of resolving anything. But, but the D note, there's one here and here. You can also take open D. If you wanted to. Uh, not cheating. Okay, so let's go. That was 
10, 7, 10, 7, 10, 8. And the notes I'm playing, look at the D scale, C, A, G, F. Okay, so that third, that third scale on the, on, over here, that one right there. that for a minute so we can uh, get used to the shape. And I am using my pinky, but you can do third finger. Hey, Christopher. Or the pinky either is fine. Now let's do the opposite. Let's go up. So F, G, A, C. And I love telling you the letter names of these notes because this is, again, this is kind of a dark area of the fretboard to, for as far as learning notes. You're like, ah, uh, it's like a lot of gap there. G, A, C. Now let's resolve down to the A at the end of that. F, G, A, C. You know what's interesting is that chord, I don't think there's a third in that chord, so it sounds like it almost sounds right. So let me let me add a note to this chord, okay? To make it sound more like a yeah, to see there's no third in there. So let me add a third. There we go. Now that F will sound weird because right now when I was playing that, it was sounding like, well, it just sounds like a minor scale over a minor chord. Uh, but there was no, I didn't have a seventh in that chord. Um, now I gotta get it, okay. Now that note sounds weird. Go play that now. Ten, uh, eighth fret of the fifth string. And then hit the open D string. I'm hitting the open fourth string. Right? And you know, this is a great trick for soloing. If you want to change positions, but you don't want the music to stop, you can always use the open string to do that. See that? So I used to. I went, essentially, musically, I did that, but I didn't use the open string. It's a trick I learned from Carl Verheyen. Um, and so you, you can use an open string to kind of allow you to move to another position on the neck. Now, if we were to do a blues note on this, it's here, so it's not the it's not the greatest place to grab a note there. That E flat, I mean that seventh would be an A flat. And it's the eleventh fret, so we're not really going to do much there. But let's do this lick again. So. Sounds better. Swinging sounds more like walking. Although I don't swing when I walk. Just my arms. Unlike Raquel Wells in that episode of Seinfeld where she didn't swing her arms when she was on stage. You remember that? Okay, now we, if we want, we want to go to the D. You want to resolve the D and go like this. Go up to the twelfth fret of the of the fourth string. I get bored. 
which is awesome. Okay. So that's pretty much it. We're, you can do that. Um, you can you can go snippet hunting on any of these groupings. We're going to get a new group on Friday. Okay. Three different scales. At, we're pretty much going to be at the 10th fret. with a, We're going to jump down to the 9th fret for the, the minor 6th uh, pentatonic. But for the most part, we'll be at the 10th fret. Um, but what, what you try to do, and the cool thing is that you could take a snippet that's like not too... Uh, Cons uh, consecutive or neighboring strings, you could do something like, uh, if you find a, let's see, um, well, the middle two strings are a good snippet, right? Uh, that's, be, I just want, you want to do snippets where you, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm so tired of saying the word snippet. I need a, I need a synonym for snippet. Let me go to the synonym dictionary here. See if there's any synonyms. Synonyms. Okay. I may not even have. Okay, that's a thesaurus is what I want. All right, snippet, segment. Let's see what they come up with. Bit, fragment. Fragment's a good morsel, smidgen, <laughs> part, scrap, piece, snip. Fragment is good. Um, I've actually heard that term more commonly than snippet. Fra you know, scale fragments. That's more common phraseology in the in the music theory you know, upper echelons of music theory and scale fragments. Um, but when we look at um, chunks, yeah, bits one. Chunks I've used. Um, so, uh, but you know, if you look at the middle two strings, you got a nice uh, the second and third string. Yeah, second and third string, we, we, we may have done that one. Uh, and keep in mind, that's the same as the first two strings on this pair, this group of scales. So, see all my scale sizes are all jacked up now, because I was being funny. Ugh. Why do I have to be such a card? I ought to be dealt with. What? All right. So, uh, yeah, the top two strings, not so much, because the G minor pentatonic and the G minor six pentatonic are identical in the top two strings in this group. Um, but you do have that D minor pentatonic We you have the change on, so that's good. Uh, the bottom two strings, no. So the bottom two strings, the G minor and the D minor are the same, but the G minor six is different. So it's the, 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 um, the string pairings where you get all, all the changes notated or noted or accommodated are the fifth and fourth. It looks like the second and third and the third and fourth. So the middle four strings, you know. Um, so it's a great way to kind of get familiar with the scale shapes and do them a little piece at a time because some of these can be a little overwhelming when you try to bite them all. You know, it's a more you can bite off than you can chew kind of thing. So, hey, Bird, what's going on? Good to see you. Um, oh, Catherine, good to see you. Uh, you know, it's good. I guess it's good being busy at work. I don't know. Uh, I was busy yesterday. I was exhausted. Today, not so much. Um, okay. What's a good way to get to learn the fingering, Kathy says. I can't seem to get... Oh, sorry. Thank you, Bruce. I can't seem to get the runs. Uh, <laughs> well, go to Taco Bell first. <laughs> no, it's okay. That's just awful. All right. Um, yeah, as far as playing, you know, um, 
Playing small segments of these scales is a great way to kind of get your speed going. Um, if, if you can't really, you know, like... To try to play the whole scale, yeah, that may take a while. Like, you can play the scale, um, but you can't play it fast. Um, and... Um, and so that's why playing in little segments can help you kind of get speed up. All right. There's not going to be a time where I feel like I want to go all the way through the scale like that. Um, just for learning it, memorizing it, maybe creating finger exercises, I do the scales all the way through, right? But in the context of making music, that's just not gonna, it's just gonna sound like you're practicing your scales. So snippets are better anyway. When I'm playing scale licks like that, I'm just playing segments of the scale and kind of milking them and then moving on to a different segment or something. Now I'm in the middle. Hey Brian, good to see you. Guys. So I, uh, uh, the bar chord again for those. Oh, the bar chord. Oh, the yeah, and you can use open chords, but yeah, I can write those in here. So the the G seven, um, G seven. The way I'm playing it is three five three four three three. So it's this. Okay, so I'm barring the first finger here, and I'm adding the second finger on the third string and the third finger on the fifth string. And then the, D, the C7. And the way I would finger these here um, is uh, I like to finger them all in one position, but we can take the C7 and just move it up two frets and make D7. But you don't play the bottom string, you play three, five, three, five, three, and that's C7. So a couple ways you could play D7. You could play it um, X, five, four, five, three, and then X like this. <laughs> Like a C7 moved up. And the advantage of playing it like this is that means all three chords are in the same position. And you've learned three different ways to play a seventh chord. Okay? Which is great. But you could also go here and then just slide up to here for C and then up to here for D. Then you only learn one shape, which is not good. Or you could go G here and then C7 here and then go D7 here. Um, which is fine, but and you're learning two shapes, but and there uh, so there's the D7 shape. Here's the other D7 shape that's the same as the C. That would just be sliding everything up. Okay. So those are your two, you know, two options for D. You could do it here, or you could do it here. And what this is is just a C7 slid up. Now you can also play it in open position if you want to. <laughs> Again, because I do say it's really important for you to be able to play the blues progression all the way through without messing up. So if you can't play bar chords or it really slows you down, like you go G, and you go to the C, and you're going to be like, uh, well, you're not going to be able to play the blues. No one's going to want to jam with you if that's the case. So, um, so G7 um, could be played like this, and open, these are open versions. It would be, uh, boom, there's G7. C7 could be played like this, X. Two, three, two. You basically play a C chord, but then add that pinky on the B flat. Sorry, I, I didn't put a gap there, but and D seven is that in open, open open chord version of D seven is that. Okay, uh, so that would be uh, we'd be curious how many people we have on Friday. We, our peak is what's our peak? 41, 42? Not bad. We usually get a, a second wave around 10 o'clock, which we did actually. We got that's when we hit 42 was right at 10 o'clock. Okay, so um, the D7 open will be XX0212. I hope that helps. Um, okay, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, um, and so. Yeah, so the G7, I mean, you could totally strum, you could probably go with a like, less gainy sound. It's not the best sounding way to play the blues, but it, it's good enough for someone to solo over. 
for you to have a friend. You could also play G7 like this. It had the pinky there. In other words, it's the same as the C. You move all three of those up and then move your first finger down, kind of, I call it exploding the chord. Boom, oh, the chord exploded and went out like that. Okay, that happens every now and then. So, uh, like C to C7 is an exploded chord. That's just a, it's a visual, it's not a technical music theory term. It's just because it's visually, you're spreading things further away from each other. Like if you blew up a bomb right there, boom, on the third string. Okay. Yeah, screenshot that. Um, and then, um, so Friday, I'm going to do the next section up here. So G minor pentatonic is going to be this one. Which would be pentatonic um, number four. And D minor is going to be pentatonic number one, which would be, which would be fun. And then we'll do... So we got some cool ones in there too. We'll have some fun with that one, so that'll be good. And then the last one we'll do will be up here. So we're we're, we're working through these. It's taken a while. I apologize, but I, I feel like it's better to work it and get kind of get some of it down. I see. My favorite comment is I'm actually learning something. <laughs> So, you know, uh, that's my favorite comment because I know that I do a lot of talking and shooting the breeze with you all. And I, I but I am glad that we're, you're actually learning uh, in this live stream. So, oh, 48 likes. Well, that's awesome. So I guess people are coming and going. Uh, we've got more likes than we have current viewers, which is which is great. Yeah, oh, I see 48 likes. Too. We got 36, 34. I'll just read off the con current viewers. I wonder how often it updates. 33. <laughs> Watch it go down as I count the numbers. It's like a countdown clock. I wonder how if I how, how long I'd have to do that before I got to zero. <laughs> like Holly would still be there. I would never get to zero. Holly would Holly and Bruce would stay there with me. Even though I'm just sitting here the whole time just going, 35. <laughs> Fifty. Fifty. Well, I see 49 likes. That's crazy. Sentinel, very useful hints. I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm a fantastic teacher. Well, thank you, Timothy. I try to, you know, I'll tell you, I, I want all of you to be teachers. I, you know, th this is all, some of the stuff, some of the basics, and we go back to, if you go back to my videos, um, uh, the Blues Basics, um, in fact, I can do, let me, uh, let me pull up this, let's see. YouTube. Wait. Oh no, that's a different thing. Okay, desktop. Uh, YouTube, live stream stuff, live stream lesson list. Let's see if I can create a little. I'll create a little uh, PDF of this. Not PDF. A um, JPEG, so we can have this. Yeah, this is going to be interesting, but I'll try. It's going to be pretty small, but I can I can insert that up here. Um. Uh -huh. And uh, so let's see, I'll go here, add image, yeah, okay, browse, so many buttons, desktop, come on, screenshot, okay, it's going to be giant. Okay. But it's nice to have this as a reference. I, I can... Make it just bigger when I need it to be bigger, okay? Um, but you can see where uh, at least Blues Basics at Lesson 43 to 52, we kind of touched on some of this stuff. And so I did, I, I, I'm pretty sure I taught you some chords and things like that in there. So if you want, um, th and this list is up on the Discord. Let me, let me grab the Discord link. Do I still have that on my, yeah. So there's a Discord link again. So you can join a Discord. You can see uh, updates. Everything I create, whether it be diagrams like the ones over here, um, or see, there we go, over here, <laughs> they're all uploaded. And you can download those and then put them in your own Word doc in any fashion you want. You can put 10 on a page, or you just want to do all the minor G minor pants on one page, and the G minor six pants on one page, and the G, uh, D minor pants on one page. You could totally do that. 
Um, I, but one of the things I want you to be able to do is teach, um, uh, just even just, you know, teach someone how to play a blues progression. And, um, because when you teach, you learn what well, somebody posted it, right. You know, if you really want to learn something, you want to master something, be, teach it. Hey, Dan, good to see you. Oh, good. You got a Fender Deluxe. That's on oh, the limited tweet. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Yeah. The, um, Um, oh, where's, who's Hans? I missed Hans. Hans, Hans Sausage. <laughs> you were 52. <laughs> like no, thank you, Hans. <laughs> uh, where are you? Sausage, that tells me Germany. Because <laughs> I think of, you know, like bratwurst, which I love, man. And Cincinnati, they have really good bratwurst. A lot of Germans in Cincinnati and Milwaukee. Oh my gosh. German food in Milwaukee. Um, so I saw, apologize for this being really low, but you can see that yeah, I started with the cage method, which is um, hard to put this somewhere where, it, it, you know, it could be right there. I started with the cage method, um, and that's basically taking the C, so spell out the word cage, C, A, G, E, and D, and taking those shapes up and down the neck. And that's often how I visualize the neck as I'm soloing. So if I want to do G licks, I'm seeing all the different uh, chord shapes that are in G. So there, here's E form G chord, here's a, a D form G chord, here's a C form G chord. Here's... So we talk about that in the first 12 lessons. And I talk about modes, which is one of my favorite lessons to teach. Um, and it, often a lot of light bulbs go on when we talk about modes. And then I talked about chord theory. This is all begin. This all goes back to the beginning of the COVID lockdown, I think March, 15th or 16th, something like that. And I decided because work was drying up and everything, everybody was really scared. And I thought, you know what, I should just show up here every day and encourage people. And, and, uh, they'll, you know, there'll be some, a little bit of talk about COVID, but I try to avoid that subject for the most part. Um, and then, uh, circle of fifths, uh, which I just inserted because we, I think because I mentioned it and I felt like I needed to teach it, uh, that we did more chord theory, and then I did an AMA, um, which is pretty much every lesson is an AMA. Uh, oh, question from John regarding lifting your fingers. Okay, John, where is that question? Oh, Tom, how do you, why do you instantly lift your fingers from the fretboard when playing a blues rhythm? Oh, just to dampen the strings, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you get, yeah, you get That's not pretty. That's why... I like bar chords for blues because you can dampen all the strings of the year, but with the, I have to dampen with the right hand if I'm going to use open strings or open chords. So, yeah. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's true if I'm, uh, sorry, this thing is really kind of in my way here. Ah, not that thing. This thing. So, sorry, I'm going to cover up <laughs> this for now. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... Um, uh, then we did some, I, I was asked to finger picking and then I did blues basics, strumming and grooving. We did like 12 lessons on that. The dad gad tuning, we did a couple lessons and I turned around and did a video on dad gad from kind of some of the best of, of that video. Um, chord progressions, which is different than chord theory, uh, chord progressions, more relating to songwriting, capoing, which is one of my favorite things to talk about. Uh, let's talk about power chords, which, uh, you know, I have a few thoughts on that. Uh, and then I talked about a couple of lessons on my most influential guitarists were largely guitar players I knew personally in my life as a kid, not so much famous guitar players. Uh, more capo stuff. Um, electric guitar weirdness. That was because I probably didn't have any idea what I was going to teach. Uh, then we did pentatonic scales, which is kind of playing into what we're doing now. Uh, intro to slide, then slide basics, soloing. Um, I got that was the one where two of those videos I got flagged for um, flagged for uh, oh let me pull up this let me do uh, something real quick I want to copy and paste that what the heck oh no I don't want that all right so um, I'm gonna copy and paste the the jam track again so you have it I'm kind of surprised it doesn't have more views than it does but anyway you can jam along with this I did not put any ads on it. Oh, you lost your capo. Dang it. 
I'm always losing capos. <laughs> Pretty much have one in every guitar case at this point because I'm like, dang it, I forgot my capo. Oh no, I got one in the case. And I have one in my car too, so if I like totally hit a bind. I don't have the cigar box guitar yet. Uh, Bruce is making it for me. I'm sure I'm going to love it, if for no other reason for the love that was put into it. Um, so, but yeah, it's so funny. I got copyright strikes on the soloing thing. With I must have inadvertently played somebody's melody for something, but I fought them and I won. So I, I don't have, I still don't have any strikes against me. Um, and then, uh, uh, oh, Sudan! Wow, you know I know Sudan. It's it's uh, south, yeah, south of Egypt. Yeah, I have I know that area a little bit because we had some friends and neighbors from Ethiopia. So I would pull up Ethiopia on the map and go, where do you, you know, and they would show me. And so, yeah, Somalia, Sudan, Ethiopia, Egypt, all kind of on that, on the, you know, the east coast of northern Africa. Uh, Sudan is on the water, correct? Or is it landlocked? Um, I'm sure there's a lot of beauty there. Some probably beautiful mountains there, too. Um, you put a lick in Discord for dual live stream Justin Johnson and Michael Oh, nice. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you put a link up. Sorry. A link, not a link. Um, what's your take on modal chords? Um, oh, I know. I need to go to Iceland. Um, I, a lot of my friends that travel a lot, uh, they all pretty much, a lot of, I have Three of them that, that all agree that their most the famous or their favorite place to go was Iceland. I like to go to I like to go to cities in Europe where there's lots of history and lots of churches and things museums and things like that. Iceland wouldn't really fit in that camp. Iceland is more in the kind of adventure travel, and I'm not really an adventure traveler. Um, but I know that if I fly on Icelandic Air to Europe, um, then we can stop in in Reykjavik. And stay there as long as we want, have a stay over as long as we want, and then the flight price doesn't change, which is great. So if we want to do three or four days in Iceland, uh, we could totally do that. Is that where uh, is that where you are, Timothy? Uh, I'm I'm amazed at how much this live stream gets around, though. It really it blows my mind. And this, I mean, I can't think of any cool anything cooler than uh, Khalid watching me from from freaking Sudan. That's like the coolest thing ever, man. So, you know, you get that guitar out, you're jamming, and then here's my face. And I remember um, reading an article uh, with uh, about the police, and they were, like, in Tibet climbing up top of a mountain, and there was someone that was hammering out, like, brass bowls, and they were, they were listening to the police album in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> they were like, wait, what? Oh, buffering, dang it. Okay, right now... Yeah, I, I haven't. Uh, uh, yeah, we went to Amsterdam in the winter. Actually, I liked it because it was it was fun. Oh, you were stationed at the airport. Wow, is that like were you in Reykjavik or is that like northern Iceland? That's crazy. And how far how far was it with your when you had a three day pass? Could you go to Europe? <laughs> That's what I'd be doing. Eighties and nineties concerts in Baltic. Oh, you should definitely come to Lithuania. I would love to go to Lithuania. You have a lot of history too, yeah. And I want to go to Croatia. I hear that's beauty, beautiful as well. They've got so much coastline that you can drive up and down the coast. There's so many places to go. It's like, gosh. And I, I feel like right now with the whole COVID thing, it's like we're never going to get to travel again. It's never going to happen. Um, uh, I uh, um, I feel like, and especially now with the spikes in, in America, I feel like nobody wants an American on their soil right now because they're like, we're going to bring you a disease. <laughs> You know, like we weren't already diseased enough. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so then then I started doing uh, diatonic scales, and we talked about those. Uh, went up the fretboard and showed you seven diatonic scales up the fretboard, and then we did three mixolydian scales for the blues. And now we're doing three pentatonic scales, and we've got a little ways to go yet. We're we're basically two thirds through this le this series, so this may end up ultimately being the longest series, mainly because I'm really wanting to camp out in these positions so you can learn them, Is that, if that makes sense. So I hopefully um, that it won't um, discourage, you know, it won't get too boring, but um, hopefully we're learning something. So um, the other thing is, um, 
the other thing is uh, I'm, I'm going to need some ideas for the next series. Uh, somebody said something. What was it? Somebody said something. And I thought, oh, that's not a bad idea. And you know what? I'm getting a little cold. Speaking of cold, um, let me get my Rick Beato on. So I have hooks on my doors in my studio that I hang flannels on, and it serves two purposes. I have flannels in my studio, and in this case, a hoodie, um, and it also helps with uh, baffling and dampening the room, making the room a little bit less bright and less uh, reflective. So kind of a two, a double, a double win there. So uh, Dave Siffers, uh yes. Dave uh, Siffries uh, went to, I think we went to high school together. Um, okay, yeah, that's kind of, yeah, that's, Holly, that's kind of my thing. She says, I'm grateful for the stately pace. <laughs> You've been reading too many British novels. Uh, repetition is great. Uh, yes, uh, and, and uh, I, I, you know, I always say, how often do I say there won't be a quiz on us? Whenever I'm talking about theory or music notes and things like that, look, don't don't worry your pretty little head about it. There's not going to be a quiz on it. I'm saying it with the full knowledge that I'm that I'm not going to quiz you on it. I'm saying it because the fifteenth time I say it, you might get it, and that's what I'm counting on. Uh, that's why I don't hesitate to to bring theory into it. Um, Alex and I were talking yesterday. Alex is such a great guitar player. We did, uh, believe it or not, we filmed our Christmas Eve services. Uh, yesterday for a church and it looked great you'll I'll have to give you a link when it comes up they'll be running them every hour on the hour from I think midnight to midnight on Christmas Eve um, and then uh, they'll leave them up so you can watch it. but it's the same service over and over again um, but they um, Alex they, they don't ever give charts to Alex because he just memorizes the songs right well, well worship songs are pretty simple you know there's like four chords maybe five chords and so it's easy to, for him to memorize, but but the Christmas songs are harder because there's all you know. We did uh, oh, I can't even think of what we did, but you know the, the harmonies were harder. But Alex just knew them. He, he, did, he was like, "Yeah, no, I got it." And I'm like watching over there, and I just played acoustic because it just seemed to be best the best thing to do. Uh, but he he was uh, he was playing electric, and he just not only was he not like stressing about what chords coming up next, he just intrinsically knew what was the next chord in the song. Because uh, his ear is so ding dang good that he also, um, you know, played good guitar ideas. You know, a lot of times if I'm like, okay, what's the next chord? I'm not really kind of being creative with my, with my guitar parts. Uh, Alex can do this. It's just amazing. It's fun to watch, you know. Uh, I, you know, I, I mean, I don't think he would say he's a better guitar player than me, but I think there's certain areas of, of guitar playing he's better than me at. Certainly playing more contemporary hooks. I'm like, oh, yeah, that, that's a great Radiohead song. I should learn how to play that. I stopped doing that when I stopped teaching. I stopped learning songs, you know. Um, <laughs> straight shooter, yeah. I'm not, you're not going to get a whole lot of dis dis uh, disagreement here. Uh But, um, but it's, uh, yeah, I'm, but I'm not going to talk too much about that here because I want to keep it about guitar and I know it can be contentious. So, but you, 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 you've got a sympathetic ear, let's put it that way. Uh, but we do have to take precautions and, uh, you know, it's, 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 we call it COVID theater. Um, and so I'm in California where they just went on, you know, we, tonight at midnight there, or tonight at 10 o'clock, they're banning restaurants in Los Angeles County from meeting outside, but then Pasadena, which is in, we're not in Pasadena anymore, but that's why I lived for 35 years uh, or longer. Um, Pasadena, which has their own health department said, yeah, we're not going to obey that. Um, Pasadena has, a, I mean, every other store, every other shop in Pasadena is a restaurant. And they're like, nope, we're not going to do that. We're still going to have outdoor dining. We're not seeing spikes in Pasadena. We're not going to do it. Um, and uh, so, uh, um, so they are actually going to disobey the L.A. County order, even though Pasadena is part of L.A. County. 
um, they're going to say they're just going to disobey it. I don't think LA County can do anything. That was another thing that I, I was trying to remember. There was another time when that happened when Pasadena, you know, when I was living there, uh, didn't obey the rules of the county. And that was when the county started doing uh, the ABCD test or ABC on restaurants. I don't think there were any, but any restaurant had a D. If you got a B, you were going to lose so much business. If you had a C, you might as well just shut up your close up shop. Um, oh, the court I wanted. Oh, Vito's here. Oh, okay. Yeah, Vito, you were asking about something. And this is good for everybody. Um, so, Vito, you were asking me on, you, you said, oh, what did you do at this point? It was like 55 something on one of the videos. And I'll show you right now. Um, and it was over this chord progression. So it was in the context of this lesson. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to make this small again. So sorry, this is going to get really small because I'm going to want the real estate. Um, but anyway, it was uh, when this, the, the county uh, said they had to use the ABC thing and Pasadena said, no, we have our own health inspectors. They do more of a pass fail kind of thing. And, uh, and so they said, no, we're going to do our own. So uh, that I, I remember that I was like, oh yeah, that's right. I forgot Pasadena had its own. And Beth looked it up and she determined in LA County, there are only two cities besides LA with a, their own health inspe health department, uh, health inspector, and that's Long Beach and Pasadena. And those are the two, in LA County, two of the biggest cities, although LA County is a huge county because Palmdale is part of that. Uh, but you know, I thought, oh, surely Santa Monica would have their own, but I guess not. So, oh good, I'm glad, okay. Uh, yeah, Learn GarageBand is free. It's on, a, it's on your Mac, it's even on your iPhone. If you have a Mac. Okay, so Vito, you were asking, I did. Okay, that lick is basically, I would say it probably came from blues um, or rockabilly or maybe country swing or country. It's a very common lick. And um, so I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you in G because we're in the key of G. So, and it. I'm going to go back to the first lesson in this series so we can see the G minor. Now, it's really, um, it's actually more part of, if you look at the G minor 6 pentatonic. Yeah, it's based on the E shape. So here's the E shape in G. Okay. Um, and basically what, it's, it's you're playing, it's a double stop, meaning two notes. You're playing two notes. And I'm playing with my first finger, I'm playing, um, I'm pushing down, holding down the third fret on the second and third string. So that those two notes are B flat and D. Uh, yeah, so basically, yeah, I'm playing the B flat. It's basically what we're, I'm going to show you. Uh, that would be the kind of the simple, simple version of it. So I'm, I got the B, and remember the B or the B flat, and remember that's the flat third of the G chord. See, here's a G chord. There's a B note in a G chord, but we're playing a B in the G minor pentatonic. We're playing a B flat, which again creates that tension. That flat, that flat third against the third creates that dissonance that wants to be resolved. Well, here's the res resolution right away. So I'm not hammering down two, two strings. I'm just hammering my second finger down on the third string, fourth fret. So I'm playing the second and third string at the third fret, and then I'm hammering on the third. Yeah, and if you want, uh, Paul, you can just use this jam track. Um, it's at 80 beats per minute, so it's not too bad. I could I could re up it slower or faster too. I could do a slower version. So then, so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm hammering on that, and so now I'm getting that I'm turning that that G minor chord into a G major chord, essentially, right? I'm kind of resolving, getting rid of the tension. So that's nice. And then I'm going to here, right? I'm going I'm laying down basically the same two notes only up two frets. Same two strings, so third and second string, fifth fret this time. Okay, and 
so what I'm kind of doing there is I'm kind of creating a sus because over the G chord. Um, I'm kind of creating um, a sus thing where I'm going, this is a sus four, right? Wants, a C wants to go down to B, and this is an E, and that's a sus six. So it'll be like, right? That's a sus six right there. So I got these, the sus four and the sus six, and they're creating tension, and they get resolved by going back down to the back down to the G chord. So it's like, so third fret, second and third string, hammer on the fourth fret of the third string, and then lay down the third finger, play the same two strings, and then go. You do something like that. Now, to make it more interesting or to fill it in a little more, I'm either hitting this G down here, in between those, that makes it a lot more difficult. Or I'm hitting the F. And all I'm doing is moving that same lick up here. This would be the D version. So that wherever this bar chord is, that you can do it right there. Here's a D. And it's one of those things that rockabilly players can do so stinking fast. I don't know. It's like... So there's that lick that you were asking about. Okay, on that note, I'm going to sign off because I got to. I've got to do a uh, a live lesson, and uh, uh, I've got a student in London that I have to teach, and um, it's just after dinner time there. So let me. In fact, I'm going to text him and let him know. Um, uh, let's see. Let him know that I'm available. You know, he gets sidetracked, so it may not happen. We'll see. Uh, he might be on. Oh, Tom, we have several new viewers. Put up a Discord link one more time. Okay, got that. Oh, are we getting that? Are we getting that bump now? Oh, we just have a lot of new ones. Okay. Dude, what did we get? We got 60 likes. That's pretty good, Bruce. I always include Bruce on that. <laughs> Thanks, Bruce. He's such a cheerleader there. So I, I consider him like part of the team. I give him credit. And Dennis, too. Dennis is the hammer. Bruce is the is like, oh, hey, here's this, and here's, you know, help. Here's, here, go here, and here's the help. And, oh, Tom, by the way. And Dennis is like, I'm taking that guy down because <laughs> he's being a troll. So there's the Discord link. That should be permanent. That should be good. Yes, uh, happy Thanksgiving. Everybody have a great Thanksgiving. Um, and then... Uh, Um, I will uh, see you. My plan. Oh, you're welcome, Mr. Brian, Mr. W. My plan is uh, to be here Friday. So if, if everything goes well, Friday, Monday. So I'm going to do new scale shapes. We're going to go up the neck. We're going to go to the 10th fret. So we're going to um, uh, do the next shape. So I'll, I'll do the same thing. Oh, well, here's the. So we did the three. So you can go back. Um, I've, I've uploaded on the Discord, by the way, all of these uh, diagrams, so you can tr put them in your own Word doc or whatever. Um, this also, this list of all the lessons so far is also up on the uh, Discord link, so you can check that out. Hey, Earl, good to see you um, up in the Bay Area. Um, and uh, we will... Yeah, it's a double stop. Exactly right. It's kind of a double stop. Um, a lot of players, uh, sorry, I guess a lot of players will do it with their fingers too, like do hybrid picking. We haven't talked about that, but see, I'm using me, I'm, I'm plucking the bass note with the pick, but I'm using my second and third finger for the, for the. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Danny Gatton would do that. That's, 
it's such a great lick. It's kind of like an organ. He's imitating a, a B3 organ player. That they go, you know, where they're hitting two hands on the keyboard. So anyway, so Friday we'll we'll go to the next uh, string, set, and we may do two or three lessons on that, um, and then move up. It just depends on how distracted I get and how much time we spend. And I, and I can tell that you're playing because the comments stop, the live chat stops when you guys have your guitars out and you're playing along with me. So I, I'm trying to make sure that you're getting at least, you know, <laughs> in a two hour lesson, you're getting 30 minutes of actual playing time going. So, but don't feel, feel, feel free to jam along with that jam track. Um, I make a little bit of money every time you uh, play it. So um, there's, uh, there may be a banner ad, but I made sure there's no midstream ad. So it's 11 minutes of, of that G7 that you can practice your shapes on, okay? Um, you can practice the scales and everything. So give it a shot. I may upload another version that's slower, all right? Because that one's 80.5. I may do one that's like 69.5 or 70.5 or something like that. I do the 0.5 just so it's different. It doesn't get, it's not as likely to be snagged by some kind of copyright bot, um, which again, a blues progression cannot be copyrighted. copyrighted. But um, so I may do that. Uh, I may upload that and you can take a sip because I touched my face. All right, that's it. I'm going to sign off. I'm going to end the stream. God bless you all. Have a great Thanksgiving. Uh, I hope it's the best one you've ever had. I've, I hope that, and I, and I, I really, you know, and I do say God bless you. And I, and I don't mean that flippantly. It's not a cliche. I, I do, I do pray that God blesses you. I, um, I may not pray for you all specifically by name, but sometimes I do. Some of you need prayer, you know, specifically, but um, uh, try try to figure out a way to make it special, okay? And maybe it'll mean not arguing for the first time on Thanksgiving, <laughs> which is really hard in this season, in a political season. Um, but uh, if you're going to be with family, you know, do, do something to make it special. If you're going to have to be isolated or separated from family, you know, try to figure out a way to make it special. Um, and uh, use your creativity and um, have uh, uh, you know it's you can you can you can make the worst of this or you can make the most of this time and I, I feel like people on our live stream here are trying to do their best to get better at guitar and make something of, of this time that we're having that's uh, more isolating. I miss people, and uh, uh, we had some people over last night for dinner. We're having people over tomorrow, family tomorrow. So uh, my daughter flew in, surprised us actually a day early. We didn't know she was coming in last night. She was supposed to come in tonight, and so she surprised us, knocked on the door at like 9 o'clock at night, which no one ever knocks on our door, period, let alone at 9 o'clock at night. So Beth was like, who's knocking on our door? And it took her a second. It, like literally she opened the door, and she didn't. It was like, I'm like looking at her like, who, who is it? And she's like, it didn't register. It was so funny. So anyway, yeah, try to do something special uh, or serve. You know, here's another thing. If you're depressed, the one of the best ways to, to uh, battle depression is to volunteer and to serve others, particularly those who have it worse than you. Because usually what happens is the depression thing is, and I've struggled with it and always in this season, um, is founded in hopelessness and um, when you feel like you you don't have any hope and you don't have an option and uh, um, and or any options in life and that could be a really bad place to be and so uh, when you go and see people that have even less options than you and you're helping them there's nothing better uh, for uh, getting rid of the blues than doing that and also exercise, <laughs> kind of completely different thing. Go running. I know it's two degrees out there, but get some exercise, get some fresh air, get out of the house if you can, and uh, don't die in frozen tundra. But you know, do, <laughs> my. But yeah, those are the two things that I, I try to do when I'm, I'm feeling a little blue, a little bit too self-absorbed and too. That's the other thing is, man, don't think, think, try to think about others more than yourself. I I find that really helps too. <laughs> So, and count your blessings. Okay, so I have four things. <laughs> All right, so I God bless you. I'll see you uh, on Friday, Lord willing, and we'll uh, continue this series. Um, and we will be done with it. It may be, I would say, between four and six lessons will be to the end of the series. So I'm going to need 
um, another um, series idea. And um, so I will, I will probably uh, need some help on that. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. God bless. Bye.